Today you see two garments made out of one pattern that offers three views. It's a vest, traditional with zipper, meant to be made with winter fabrics, you know, your nice warm fleece, quilted fabrics, that sort of thing. I did not use those types of fabrics. I'm using other types, although I'm using the exact same pattern pieces. It's gonna give this vest a different look. It can give you more ideas on how you can take this pattern even further. Linen, rayon twill, Lots to see, stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I'm excited to share because I've been planning these makes for a long time. This is the Oakley vest from Love Notions. It's a feature Friday pattern. It means it's only $5 today. And it's also special because it's a re-release. This pattern has already been around, offered in the old sizing of XS to 3X. Now it's offered up to 5X, so it's been retested to improve the sizing. This is a re-release along with it being Feature Friday. As always with Love Notions patterns, my affiliate link is down below in the description box if you would like to use it to get yourself this pattern. This is a small way that you can support me without costing you anything extra because I make a little commission with each of the patterns that are sold through my link. So thank you so much. It's a really cool pattern. I have worn this type of garment a lot. In the past when I lived in New Zealand, in Chile when I had winter and I like always having my arms sort of free. So this type of design is something I would gravitate towards if I had the proper weather to go with that. There are three views. View A is meant to be made with the type furry fabric, fake fur, minky, cuddle fabric like that really fuzzy fabric. This design is different, it's simple, it's just got side seams and shoulder seams. The fuzzy side on the outside is sewn, you sew separately lining and you can sew it all together and bag it out through the hem and you have a perfectly lined vest. Now when I see the pictures on the website listing where everyone has made like fake fur and it looks so so pretty, Okay, well, I am not gonna make that because I just can't. Really easy, quick make. It's designed to not hit the center front from what I can see in everyone's feet when I measure the pattern as well. It's not meant to close at the front. So you're meant to have sort of like an opening here, quite wide opening, so it will reach sort of there, the center of the bust around there. That's view A, that would be, I think, the easiest one to make in the sewing department, although I'm sure if you've ever cut fake fur, that it's just not that straightforward. You don't just cut it. You have to cut it on the back, not where the furry bit is, but where you actually have the fabric. With a tiny embroidery scissors, you have to cut just there. And then you sort of like peel the pieces out and the fur hasn't been cut itself. So um, just a tip for you, if you wanna make this out of fake fur, um, look super cuddly, super warm. I can't do it, it's 100 degrees. Um, yeah, just the thought of it makes me sweat more than I'm already sweating right now. And I'm actually just dabbing myself every now and then just so you don't see all the little droplets. This is grabs from one of the makes I'm going to show you by the way. View B and view C are similar. They have the similar look. They have binding that finishes that zipper down the center front. View B has a collar, no princess seams and patch pockets where you put binding all around the patch pocket and then sew it on the top. So the body of UB is super simple, shoulder seams, side seams, and then you spend most of your time doing the binding and the zipper technique. View C is the one that catches my eye straight away because of the princess seams. That just means there's a lot of opportunity for fitting and fine tuning the fit to your body and your bust. There's princess seams at the back as well, which is gold. It means that there's an extra seam that you can tweak to bring it in at the waist and just give it a little bit more shaping and sort of customize the fit to you. In the style that I wanna make it, I didn't think that the fitting was important. So this one has a hood. I'm sure you can interchange the hood with the collar from view B to view C. You can just swap those around. There's also some binding done on the center front before you attach that separating zipper. And the pockets on these ones are in the inseams of the princess seams. You put your hands in like that in the pocket and the pocket pieces are actually on the same pattern pieces as the center front and the side front pieces. Lots of options there. You could have a lot of fun with all these views, views A, B and C. I have decided to make view A and view C to show you in this opportunity. 
but not in the winter style, although I've used the exact same pattern pieces. Over time and changing countries and living in a different context, I do not have any use for this type of winter wear type of style that is made out of all these fuzzy fabrics. It doesn't mean I can't sew it though, and you already know about me. I've already made a coat in not wool. <laughs> I always look at the pattern and see what it offers, the style, the design lines, the line art, what is actually there. And you'll be surprised how further you can take a pattern that is designed to be made a certain way, like the Oakley vest. I already mentioned that view A was meant to be made with the fluffy winter fabrics like fake fur, Sherpa, Minky, Karu fabrics, that sort of thing. On the inside you have lining and you would just choose a lightweight woven fabric to do that, that would match your outer fabric. For view B, then you have a lot of other options like fleece. They sell these fabrics that have been pre-quilted already that are not that heavyweight and that are sort of fleece-backed and I have never in my life seen those fabrics because they just don't sell them here. What have I chosen for view A is a rayon twill. Got nothing to do with your fur and all that, but that's what I've chosen. And for view C, the one with the princess seams, I have chosen a linen rayon blend, linen 70% viscose or rayon 30%. I just mentioned it was re-released today to include up to 5x. So the bust will go up to a 51 and a half inch circumference and the hips up to 59 and a half. There is a standard bust and a full bust, um, like with most patterns that are sort of current. So it gives you a, a chance to get a better fit around your bust. If you have a difference of four inches or more from your high bust, your full bust circumference, you could choose that and avoid a full bust adjustment. The amounts of positive ease here on this pattern are different for different sizes. So I can't give you a number. I'm just telling you that there is positive ease at the bust and the hips enough so that you could wear a light layer underneath. I would suggest just checking your size, specifically what your body measures. Find out the size on the chart, look down below at the finished garment measurements and see what the difference is. If you think you want to wear your garment with a really thick turtleneck or a sweater underneath, maybe you want to go up a size. If you want to just wear this with light things underneath, maybe just make your size. It's all up to you. And also, I'd like to remind you that the thicker the fabric you choose, the smaller the garment will end up being inside. Because you can cut out the same pattern piece out of a linen and cut the same pattern piece out of a quilted fabric, sew them up, and the linen one will fit loose <laughs> and the quilted one will be tighter because it's just the bulk of the fabric when you sew them it just takes up more room inside the fabric as such giving you less space inside so take those things into account when you're choosing your fabric and your size if you're choosing a really thick bulky fabric um, maybe you want to size up i made these two garments with really nice fabric i did make muslins to make sure i was getting the fit that i wanted and just to check some changes that I wanted to make on the muslin. So I'll show you first what I did with view A, which is the furry type one. I'll show you some line art here of what the original is and what I intend. I intend to have a duster, a lightweight little thing to put on top that reaches mid knee sort of thing. It's just the same pattern piece that is extended down and has slits on the sides. All the raw edges will be finished with bias binding. And because this rayon twill is the same on the wrong and the right side, the same color. When I walk, you're not gonna see anything ugly like on the, on the wrong side of the fabric. So that's why I wanted to choose this fabric. Also, it drapes beautifully and yeah. So let's see a little bit of the process to get this one to fit like I want it to fit. This is starting to wear me. You've been raining down like hail. This is a quick muslin of UA, which is the most simple version, the one that's meant to be made with fur or sherpa, fully lined, that sort of thing. I just want to make it out of regular fabric, just like a little cover up. And I can see from the feet on the website and everyone's feet that it's meant to have this separation in the center. It's not meant to reach the center as it's designed. Um, I would like mine a little closer to the center and I've done a little dart there on the side now the intake of the dart there the width I'm happy with I just need to make it a little bit longer so I've put a pin I'll just lengthen it by like an inch um, but I'm glad I'm glad I get to see that on my body the other thing I'll do is just make this a little bit narrower here 
like that just a little bit and I think the armhole actually is a little high on me um, I will lose only a quarter of an inch with the binding method that I use so I think I'll reduce it by a good 3 8 plus this is something I wear on top of clothes so I'm not concerned that this has to be super closed or anything like that like when I make a sleeveless garment that will be worn on its own so what I'll do to the center front here from the neckline here just add a little curve and just bring a little bit of extra pattern piece to the center about an inch like that so it won't reach the center but it will be a bit closer to the center that's how I'd like to have it um, this is just the original length I think I want to make mine that's the length so I'll measure from here down how much I want and I think I'll pin out a little dot right there as well this is the front pattern piece and I've done the changes I wanted based on the feet of my muslin so this is the original line here in the center and I've just added an inch there and then at the height of the bust here which is this line I marked my apex point there from there I still have an inch extra but then I grabbed my curved ruler and from there I just use this curve to sort of find the shape to end up with the same width on the top here so I didn't want to make it wider here on the top just bring in a little bit extra 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 to have an extra inch here at the height of my bust and then going straight down so that's that just added extra paper here you can see on the armhole I've drawn three eighths of an inch that I'm going to remove just to have a bit wider armhole and you can see my bust start that I've drawn it I drew the line first my bust height right there I initially made a dart up to there, I lengthened it and I have a dart intake there of almost one and a half inches, it's one and a quarter inches. So when you close the dart there, you're going to lose that one and a quarter inch right from the side seam. So I've just added it at the bottom and just sort of straightened out the hem so it's not going to be curved like that. So this is for the front. At the back I will reduce also the three eighths on the armhole and draw some little darts at the back. This is the back, I've trimmed away 3 8 from the armhole and I've drawn a little dart there. I've pinned it on the muslin and then just sort of figured out the reference points at the small of my back, how high I wanted it to go and how low. It's not a huge dart, from the center of the dart there's half an inch that way, half an inch that way, it'll remove an inch here because it's double, it'll remove another inch there. Now on view A, the back is one extended piece because it's meant to be cut out of fur, you're not supposed to put that on the fold. But because I'm working with regular fabric, I just cut my pattern piece in half so that I can put it on the fold. I have this burgundy wine type color rayon twill and I want to make this view A vest, which is the most simple one, longer and it be like a duster. So from the original hem that is slightly curved, I have lengthened it by 11 inches so when I made my muslin I just measured from the edge to the middle of my knee and measured what difference there was there so that's why I'm adding 11 inches maybe you can see some chalk marks there I've just extended the line and from here actually I'm going to cut it wider so I can have space to do some slits on the sides I'm hoping hoping from all that bit at the top I can get enough bias tape to finish the armholes and the front of the neckline, all that done. Okay, so you see I've made my muslin, I checked, I knew I wanted to make this a little closer to the center front, not as separated as the original design is. Just for personal preference, easy to do, just add an inch on the center and then taper up back to the neckline so that this isn't different. Very easy to do. I did add some darts as you can see. I will link down the videos that I've just, just recently uploaded about how I do this. And you can see it in details in my refashion videos. In one of them, I show in more detail how I draw those back darts on the pattern. It's exactly what I've done here. And I've added a little basta on this one. The same things, so I will link those videos down below. I don't wanna be repeating and filming the same thing over and over because these are things that I do frequently. So please look at that if you're more interested to know about these darts. I think they do make a difference, at least for my body shape, they do make a difference. 
and if you are making view A with the furry fabric, you don't need all the shaping, just forget about it. But I'm making it in a light layer that is going to fall on my body. And I did want it to have a little bit of shaping there, so I've done that. I was able to make enough bias tape to go around the armholes and this neckline. You can see the neckline here wasn't changed. It was just brought up further to the center there. It still has the original curve. Like up to here, it would be the same pattern if I'd made it out of like a fake fur, <laughs> you know? It's just that I've made it out of a rayon twill in a single layer. I've got the armholes finished with self-made bias tape from the same fabric. I think it looks really pretty. The neckline was finished in the same way. So it follows the shape of the curve because it is bias tape. It will conform to shapes like that. And then it goes straight down, down. It's a long garment. <laughs> So it was super simple to sew, side seams, shoulder seams, a few darts, there is my bust dart there and I have some back darts there, fisheye darts. I didn't make the darts too wide at the back, I only remove an inch on each side, so an inch there, an inch there. From the center of the dart there's half an inch to one side, half an inch to the other. So it's not like I'm doing crazy shaping, it's just a little bit, you know? I have got up to here the seam sewn and then I have slits. Seams on the sides are serged separately. And then you saw, I told you I was gonna cut it wider just here, so I had more space to sew those slits there. That's just something I did on the fabric itself. I didn't modify the pattern piece as such. The pattern piece is still the original shape. At the shorten and lengthen line on this pattern, view A, I needed to add one and a half inches of length. It's sort of at the waist area. I find that my torso is longer than the torso drafted for Love Notions patterns. So I'm careful to measure that and add that onto the paper before I cut everything. And I even did that before cutting my muslin. This is view A, meant to be made with fur and all those things. It's the same pattern, just extended the center front a little bit further in, just for a little bit more coverage. It still doesn't reach the center but it's not as separated as the original. Got a colorful scarf here, just a very basic outfit. It's like a duster, it reaches mid-knee. Has little slits there. So very nice little layer to put on top. And I love things like this, so it goes straight down there. Slits, small little darts here, some darts on the bust, just for some shaping. It's not meant to be worn by itself, so it is a little bit lower. You can see the cami I'm wearing under there. But there's no gaping here, it's all very nice. Little cheeky dart that I put there for shaping. I think it helps a lot for my body. Finish with bias tape inside there from the same fabric, super pretty. Love this, just the way I pictured it. I can see making more in chiffon and other solid colors that could go over my colorful dresses. Basic outfit underneath, just spiced up with a little chiffon scarf, super nice. I'm very happy with this, super happy. It turned out exactly like I'd pictured it. And view A was perfect to make this little change, make it longer and have this look in a light fabric. scarf and a really nice silk top that is very old I made many many moons ago and the colors go perfect love it I'm extremely happy with this duster it's just very very nice very floaty the perfect layer to throw on something to make it seem like you're wearing a coat but you're not you know it's just the look that I'm after of these long type garments but in light fabric so that I can actually wear this style in the weather that I live in. So then we have UC which is the one with the princess seams. I also added length on the shorten and lengthen lines. I added one and a half inches there the same as I did to view A and that's just for my torso to fit in a better way there to match the, the waist sort of area. So I've done that. I also made a muslin, check the fit, customize the princess seams here to close the armholes a little bit better for my body on the front and the back. So you'll see the fit of the muslin, little bits that I did to perfect the fit on myself. Also, I never intended to use the collar and the zipper. I wanted this to be like a jacket and that center to just fall over like a lapel. 
that was my vision so I drafted some facings for the front and the back I'll show you that so just see some practical things of how I did tiny changes to make view C work for me I have tried to give you my soul but you can't love something you it's too late this is view C and it's the one that's got princess seams and the zipper and a collar so I've just cut the main pieces. This is shorter because my fabric ran out, but I did lengthen this one by one and a half inches at the shoulder and lengthen line. I have sort of shaped the princess seams to fit me. I had a bit of extra space there and I've pinned it here on the center. Now my idea is to not have a zipper. What I want to do is have a facing and I want this to be like a lapel <laughs> that falls like that. So I won't be putting on the collar piece. At the back on this princess seam, I also took it in a little bit right there at the waist, just a little bit, just to give it a bit of shaping. Otherwise, I'm super happy with the fit. If you were doing the full on zipper version, you could get it out of just one length fabric. This is woven fabric, 57 inches wide, and you would be able to do that if you're not doing the pockets. The pockets are part of these pieces. So you can see that is the center front and the pocket just comes out that way out of the same fabric. If you were doing the pockets, then it would take up more width on the fabric and then this layout is impossible. <laughs> so on the side of this one, I have the pocket piece tucked in there, folded away. It would also add to the width of the fabric consumption if you were using the pocket piece, but I'm not. In case you wanted to try one without pockets or you had a little piece of fabric that you really liked and you wanted to try this pattern, this could work because that's all you need if you're putting in the zipper and doing all the binding and all of that. The collar, I haven't put it here, but it would take a little, a little piece of fabric as well. So just an idea, I am going to actually cut another one of those from more fabric here because I'm going to do that out of a facing. Here I have the front piece and that's the back piece and the green line you see there is what I drew for my facing. So from the center front I measured 4 inches. And I just went up following that straight line there parallel to the center front but but going up to the top with a curved ruler I made a curve there that reaches not the edge of the shoulder seam because I'm gonna have bias tape there so I'll lose a little bit of width there and I don't want my facing to be bigger so I'd say the facing is about an inch in from the edge there from the armhole so curve 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 and then just keep going down very easy to do. After I've cut my front piece, I'll just cut this away, cut my facing that will be fused with block fusing, and then I'll just tape this back together again. For the back, I did a round facing, it's smaller. And when you put these together, when you unite these shoulders, they always need to be something that can be continuous. So from the neckline in, they have the same distance there. So when I unite them, it'll be just a nice little seamless curve there at the back. I won't do anything different than cut this shape out, block fuse it, cut it out because this pattern already includes the seam and a facing is basically just the replica, you know, it's the same thing. When I put the facing together, I'll just sew the seams the same as the jacket and I'll put it right sides together and I'll sew it at 3 8 seam allowance. So you can see that drawing that facing was extremely easy, you just need a curved ruler, there's no set rules. I do have some proportions in my head about facings like this and I like them to be at least four inches wide. You know, from the center, you going up and then curving out to the shoulder. Because this was a sleeveless garment, I didn't want this facing to be like hitting the shoulder and like to be seen and covering the bias binding I was gonna use on the sleeveless armhole. So I was careful to make that facing an inch narrower than what I could see there for the shoulders. Only precaution I did there, the rest is super easy. I just sewed up everything because I'd already made a muslin. I knew what I was doing. I did top stitch every single princess seam. I sewed on that facing, right sides together. You know, trimmed it, snipped it, understitched it. You know what I do, it was a simple facing. And now I have this garment that could be like a little jacket. So this is how that would be, right? like that and you would have a collar and a zipper going down the center but mine doesn't have a collar and this flaps open like that so it's super cool i love it it's just the look i wanted to have 
and you can see the facing there. I didn't do anything fancy with these facings. I just searched them. They are interfaced and you know I like to interface the fabric first and then place my facing pieces on top so that they don't get smaller or get deformed or anything and it's so much easier to cut this piece once, not be cutting separate interfacing, separate pieces, trying to fuse them and yeah, that's just more work. So you know that I do that and I did initially want to bind the edges of the facings but then I went against it because I thought I had more of this bias tape. I made this bias tape last year. It's super nice quality cotton shirting fabric. Um, a shirt my husband wore to death and once, I don't know what he did, but he ripped the sleeve. It just, he ripped it out in the street, I don't know. So I got a whole body of this shirt and made a ton of bias tape. And I thought I had more. When I went to check, I measured and just saw I had enough for the armholes. So I prioritized finishing the armholes with that. I think the gray tones and the stripes look really pretty inside the leopard print, you know. <laughs> <laughs> at least they're in the same tones and I'm not doing this with red or anything. So I didn't have enough to bind the edges of the facing that would have looked really pretty. But you know, you can't always do it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so I didn't do it. I have hand hemmed, I have pressed the side seams open and searched them separately. All the princess seams have been top stitched. This is a print and here you can see a princess seam. I've done an edge stitch there of top stitching. And for the front, I've pressed the seams towards the center. For the back princess seams, I've pressed the seams to the side. There's no center back seam. It was super easy to put together, let me tell you. And now I'll show you something I've done on the neckline for the understitching. I've done the understitching there, of course, to keep the facing inside. But on the front, I couldn't just understitch like normal because I knew I wanted this collar to flap to the side like that. So where there is this break point there, I have under stitching here to keep the facing to the inside on the center front, but from here down. From here up, I have under stitching under there. Maybe you can see the under stitching because this flaps open like that. So on this point here, on the inside, you try it on, you figure out where this is gonna naturally fall, mark it with a pin, on the inside, you snip into that seam allowance. <laughs> Tiny seam allowance has already been trimmed away. And that's how you can understitch in different directions. You know, inside that snip, you have the seam allowance, one going one way, one going the other way. And that allows you to understitch in different ways. So under there and under here. I have shown this in a lot more detail on my Octave coat, the red coat I made last year, also a pattern from Love Notions. I did do it there and I did show it there, so I will also link that down below. Um, otherwise, if you don't want to go into those techniques, you know, you can just carefully, carefully press everything and maybe top stitch with a quarter of an inch from the bottom up all the way around and you would also have a really nice result. I like doing those techniques that are a little bit specific for things that I like because it just helps that lapel fall really beautifully. You're not going to see the seam, it will roll to the inside because understitching is behind. And on the front you won't see the stitching line either because the facing is on the back. So just little things and I love this. It's just so good. This is just what I love to wear. Fits amazing. I was able to customize the fit to my body on the muslin, you know, make small changes to the pattern pieces. And I know I want to make this again, for sure. You see, but without the collar, without the zipper, same princess seams. I did lengthen this, as I mentioned, one and a half inches, just for my height adjustments. And you see the hem is a little bit curved, the same as it would be if you're doing the binding and all the traditional ways, just I didn't do it, you know, I just hemmed it. So princess seams are here. Very good chance to customize the fit everywhere. He super well to fit the bust to fit the arm hole really nice and close. The same at the back here, there is another princess seam and I was able to take it in a little bit here on this area so there's a little bit more shaping at the back. I have a scarf type look but it's actually just a chiffon scarf, you know, just for the look but it's not warm. This is what I wanted. I wanted this sort of to fall over like a lapel. So this would be how this is if you had a zipper and then you had a collar there. 
that curved shape there but I've just made it be like that love it I really 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 like this <laughs> I'm extremely happy with my little vest I could make more and make matching skirts and then when I would have like suits something like this could be dressed up and down I love it Of course I had to show it to you with the sleeveless version, same little cami top I had underneath before I put it here. I think the grey tones go with anything that you put under here, it's like a neutral. Armhole looks super nice, it's not meant to be worn on its own so I've left it a little lower purposely. It's still nice and closed and I've got that beautiful bias tape inside. So love this, I would wear this with a skirt or pants. I would wear it with a dress on underneath, you know, a solid dress underneath would be good too. Basically any color cami top I have would go with this outfit, so very versatile color this. Uh, although you might think it's not that versatile, it really is for me. You know, blue, red, green, whatever under there would go really well. <laughs> My mom would love for me to make her view see with the collar. She does wear these types of garments back home in Chile because when I talk to her she's wearing that sort of thing. Keeps her nice and warm and it's a style that she likes. She wears them over blouses, you know, she does wear these types that are made out of fleece. So I would love to make one for her someday when I can actually see her again because this summer we won't be able to travel back home because of all the COVID crisis things. It's just not safe to do that still. So one day I will make the traditional <laughs> fuzzy, warm, cozy Oakley vest for sure. For now I'm making them work to the hot weather using the same pattern pieces. You could make a really nice formal looking suit out of something like this. Make a nice pencil skirt, wear a really nice blouse underneath. I mean. Or you can wear this with jeans and like just a cami underneath, it could be so versatile. And this is leopard print. I don't like leopard print in those brown beigey tones. But when it's in other tones, I do like it. And this is a neutral for me. It's super toned down, I think. It's not that in your face. If you want to try this pattern for yourself, it's a good day to get it for only $5. There's so many views here already. And maybe you want to try some lightweight options like the ones I've shown you takes the pattern even further to be sort of like a trans-seasonal pattern. It can work for any season, even this season that I live in now, which is completely hot. <laughs> even for someone like me that does not have winter weather, the Oakley is still amazing and you can still get amazing garments out of lightweight fabric. You are very welcome to use my affiliate link if you want to because that supports me. Every sale that goes through my link, I receive a small commission from there and that helps support me, of course. So if you do use it, thank you so much. I am planning lots of videos for next week, so we will see each other more. I know this week I've been a little bit absent, but it's not that I haven't been sewing, it's just that I haven't been able to make the videos. So I will see you again very soon. Happy sewing. Bye.